there we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> hey, Sarah, how's it going? Great, great. Actually, before we go on, I wanted to ask you, because I, I saw you in Red Deer when you guys opened for Pup. Mm -hmm. And then saw you again in Calgary with uh, Alexis on Fire and the Distillers. Yeah, cool. And, and uh, I remember I found a video of you drumming on YouTube, and I don't remember what the drumming was, but, like, are, are you an educated musician? Yes. Yes, I am. I um, have been studying drums since I was 10 years old. And then I got like my degree and, and I traveled a lot and I toured a lot with many bands and I got my, actually my, um, like my university um, thing. I don't know how it's called in English, but cause I'm French Canadian, of course, but, but yeah, yeah. I, I studied like jazz and Latin music and my real passion of course is like punk and rock. So this is where, I, this is like where I come from also. So, so where, yeah. where did you get your degree from? Here in Quebec, there's a, a thing between high school and university that's called CEGEP. Uh, so I did that uh, here in Quebec, and then I went to University of, uh, of um, UCAM. Well, it's nice to talk to you. Um, and first of all, congrats on the new music video today. That's very exciting. Yeah, we're so excited about this. We didn't really know, you know, with all, the, all this like happening around us, but we did it anyway. The music video itself is very, very cool. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I think that's yeah. some that seems like some some very very high quality animation it is it is uh greg double did it it's a uh, the singer and a bass player okay and i actually didn't know the guy but he did like an amazing job and and we're super happy happy about it yeah and um your ep comes out this friday just a couple days from now right yeah it does it does we've been working on this for for a year now maybe more than that and it just, it felt like we had to put it out anyway with all this situation. And, and uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a good, good decision. How long has No Bro been a band? What, how old do you consider yourselves? Like the, the, with the musician we have in the band now, it's been a year and a half. But No Bro, like, uh, like a lot of musicians have come and go. It's been around since like 2014, I think. But like, yeah, but like this, this like uh, all-star band, if I can say, is, is is like a year and a half old. Was is Liz a new addition to No Bro? Fairly new addition. Yeah, fairly new. Uh, so she came in pretty much at the a year before Caroline Carboneau on the on the guitar. Okay. And as soon as Liz came in, it just changed for the best the whole the, the whole perspective and the whole vibe of the thing. But like, while keeping like the the core of the the band just like she just shreds like perks and like adds keyboard lines and it's just it's like a fourth dimension in the punk band is she also oh, a yeah. trained trained percussionist oh yeah oh yeah. yeah she's she's crazy yeah she studied in in cuba uh, uh, latin perks wow and she's like she's insane you give her any percussion and she's gonna just like shred it and it's gonna be like a it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, those bongos are not nece they're not necessarily something I knew I was missing from from punk rock. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's like a it's like a gift she has, <laughs> and she's putting it in in this band, and it's awesome. Not that her her main instrument are congas, and okay. you can hear them in, in the new song that's gonna be released uh, called "Don't Die." But then they were just too heavy and too big to 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 like uh, travel show to shows yeah so she just grabbed like small bongos and then who knew that someone put shred bongos like that she didn't even know i'm super glad you guys wrapped up your pup tour and your alexis on fire tour before all this happened right yeah. oh my god yes i mean we still lost a couple shows and everything but like these two tours are oh my god it just i just don't even know like what to say i mean i i use sometimes I think about what we've done and like, I just cry because <laughs> it's just so cool and insane. And, and yeah, I'm so glad we did it. And we actually have uh, holds for October, November for insane tours that I can't really talk about, but if it's happening, it's just gonna, it's gonna feel so good, but like just cross uh, fingers, but, but yeah. What was that uh, 
period, like from starting the tour with Pup, which I'm assuming was a great time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then playing those awesome venues. And, and I mean, Pup is just an incredible band. I, I'm a big fan of Charlie Bliss, too. And, and then seeing yeah. you guys to top it off was just incredible, especially here in Red Deer. Your set in Red Deer was like you, you got you really impressed some people out here. It was fun. It was so fun. Are you considering Sick Hustle the first EP? We kind of do, yes. Because like I said, it's like the it's the first thing we record as this uh, particularly uh, lineup of musicians. Mm -hmm. and it, it really changed from, from the past um, recordings and years. So I kind of consider this like Novro 2.0, yeah. which is for me, it's like this is the new bottom line. And then we just kind of build it up over this. With that being said, like you, you did those two incredible tours before you even had a record, really. Yes, the songs were there. Um, most of the songs were there, but but yeah, and we have like a, like a, drop, a Dropbox folder full of unreleased song and and that we play live. Mm -hmm. But it's just there's so much more coming, so much more coming. How was it playing those stages on the Alexis on Fire dates? It was like insane, <laughs> just like. Uh, <laughs> The, the first like the, the first uh, venue we just got in and we had like this uh, we have like a Toyota Sienna like a minivan mm -hmm. and we just pull up pull up like between like those tour bus and it's just it feels like crazy and we feel stupid and and, shit. and then we get in and we actually get in like fucking arena and it was just we just like we were running around and screaming like we look like five-year-old girls but like in our <laughs> almost 30 so and then we met like we met like Brody Dale and the whole band and oh my god that felt like a dream and it I was bet. so intense it, it, it was just so intense because we were pretty much the whole time it was just the four of us no team no driver no merge person no nothing so we were just chasing uh, tour buses and then we had to go there and sound check and then 30 minutes to an hour between the sound check and the actual set and then oh, I was insane. And then when we actually got to stop, when we were in the in the plane back home, I just looked on my right, and I just saw Catherine. She was just pouring, just crying. I was like, "Oh my God, are you okay?" And she was like, "I just like she just kind of realized what we just did because when we were doing it, it was surreal. But when I, I think about it, like I told you, sometimes I just like I can't believe it. So stressful because you wanna." You want to hit that mark because people, the people that got us there, they believe in us, mm -hmm. and and we have to like give them what they they what we know we can do, but like we still have to deliver, you know. And it's insane. We it's it's crazy. And just the sound on the stage in the stadium is so much different than the sound on the stage at the at the in Red Deer. Mm -hmm. It's just we, we didn't know what to expect because we, we've never played any arenas ourselves. So. Um. Yeah. What was it like? Uh, like, uh, did the distillers mean much to uh, members of No Bro long before yes. you guys got on that that bill? Yes, yes, especially Catherine and I. Uh, Catherine, it's been like her inspiration to like when she was fourteen to dye her hair in black and like get into all this like punk music and everything. And for me too, when I was sixteen, I just got super deep in in the distillers and and oh my god when we actually got to meet them and saw them soundcheck and, and we saw like the, the set uh, side stage mm -hmm. we were just, again, we were crying because we cry a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, the distillers is just like shredding and everything and Catherine and I side stage just like, oh my God, and like crying and it was amazing. It was amazing. Can you talk about any of the other no bro plans that have changed in the next few months? Had you, I mean, it's a weird time. You've got an EP out, so. Yeah, I mean, everything is pretty much on hold. We just decided that we're going to go through this EP, put it out, and whenever everything opens up, we're just, we are already have like a feet outside. We're already there. We, we're so ready to, to play this EP. Mm -hmm. and, and there's so much more coming. And we were actually supposed to go to uh, Toronto with Tom Darcy at the end of this month to record the second one because we're so ready. What, like, what have you been doing as a band during quarantine have you guys been creating at all or yeah yeah we've been into a lot of like um more like the more of the boring side of music if yeah. i can say like uh, like legal stuff and like signing papers and everything like organizing stuff because we have time now 
uh, we recorded uh, an acoustic country version of a song on the EP that we didn't, yes, we didn't release it because I'm a big fan of uh, turning Novro songs into country songs. I don't know okay. why. I always like, when I have an acoustic guitar in my hands, I just mess around and Catherine actually loves country music. And so we did it and everyone, everybody did like a, a track, uh, like a, a, at their place and we just did the montage and everything. So we're going to put this out sometimes, but for now we're just going to stick on the EP, promote that and see what happens. That's a very interesting concept. I've never, never really considered no bro <laughs> songs as country songs. <laughs> yeah, that's why it just, we got silly with it and it's actually a, a good country song, I think. Uh, with, sorry, what, what song did you record? A country version of it's uh, mariana oh mariana okay so um Mar is, is there a real mariana is mariana a real person oh yeah oh she's very real yes <laughs> she was uh, the former guitar player of no bro oh and yeah and she she was there before i was there right and she was uh, i think she still is Catherine's uh, best friend and she just like out of the blue, we were going to play the biggest show we would ever play just before Death From Above and Royal Blood. Wow. And then she 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 said she would she was going in Vancouver on a goat farm to live and she just left everything. She left everything and she broke Catherine's heart and then and then we had to just find another guitar player and this is when uh, Liz came in the picture. Uh and then it's just everything about this uh the decision she made is pretty much why we're here today. Also, it's a, it's like a full of events. It's just mm -hmm. yeah, she's been very important in the band too, Mariana. She wrote like a couple of things, and she was there since day one. So yeah. Wow, that's very a real. crazy story. <laughs> yeah. Well, what have you been doing other than music and that boring administrative stuff for No Bro? Uh, I yesterday for the first time I went to play drums for the first time in a month and a half. Wow. Uh, yeah, because I'm I'm actually like a, a freelancer. I'm a drummer for all these other bands and projects. Mm -hmm. So my job is to play drums. So I kind of needed this break, I feel. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm just going back to it, doing a lot of uh, cooking and, you know, just this boring stuff. I went to buy a lot of booze to this morning. <laughs> yeah, because Liz, Liz is going to turn uh, 30 years old. Oh, wow. So... Yeah, so we're going to have a little party in our basement, <laughs> just like the two of us with our sisters. Have you, have you been watching anything on the screen that uh, you might want to recommend? Uh, I've been like, like binge watching like crazy um, MasterChef. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I, I love this cooking shows. And yeah. like everybody else, uh, Tiger King, it's okay. insane. And that's pretty much it. Um, I've been asking bands, uh, because obviously like Canadians are all in this unique, similar situation where we can only go grab groceries yeah. so often, right? So yeah. I've been asking bands if there is one thing that they didn't get. I actually have to go because I have nothing left. So right now I have nothing. <laughs> So yeah, everything. So, so everything, yes. Yeah. Very cool. Well, is there anything you want to say to your, your fans about uh, the current situation or about Nobro going, going in the future? I mean, Nobro is not going anywhere. We're just waiting and our fans are waiting. And it's, we're all in the same like shit show, I guess. And as soon as we can go out, we're just going to go outside and play these songs. And it's going to feel so good. And just, I don't know. That's it. We just have to like go through this.